Hello everyone, um, good afternoon um, and thanks for joining me on this Contact Family uh, webinar. Um, this is a managing conflict and understanding mediation uh, topic. Um, so welcome and uh, just let me uh, uh, tell you that if there are any technical hitches, um, please do bear in mind um, that uh, we've got somebody on hand to sort those out and so please do bear with us. Um, those of you joining by PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone should now be able to see um, this slide um, and uh, hopefully we're all working from the same hymn sheet. So, um, uh, so to start with some housekeeping. Um, uh, so there are uh, so many attendees, it's not practical for the verbal questions to be taken. Uh, therefore, you will all remain muted throughout. I'm sorry about that. Um, but if at any point you have questions, please use the question icon on your GoToWebinar toolbar on your screen. Um, and this will allow you to type your question in the next uh, in the text box there and submit this to the webinar administrator, who is Helen Reed today. So um, I'll select as many of those questions uh, as time allows. Um, but if uh, some questions come in that are of the same topic, we'll try to condense those. Um, so, um, so further relevant questions not covered in the time that we have or that may need a more considered answer, um, conflict can be a difficult subject, uh, will be answered and posted on the Contact Family website along with the recording of this webinar. Uh, and details of those will be circulated next week by Helen, so watch out for that. And uh, just lastly on this one, at the end of the webinar, a short questionnaire will be launched, and we really ask you to complete that. Um, it gives us a good indication of um, the kind of training, uh, online training, that uh, you might want for the future. And, uh, and then it helps us out by uh, telling us what was um, useful and what wasn't useful. Okay, so um, so about me. Uh, so my name is Jacqueline Lyon. I've worked with Contact Family as an associate for several years, uh, both in London and in the counties. Um, I've worked with lots of people. I've worked with lots of you. So hi to all of those. I'm doing a wave now uh, who I have worked with. I uh, hope you're well. Um, so during the past few years, um, I've supported parent forums on a range of issues, and of course these included dealing with conflict. Um, in an earlier life, I was a senior manager in a London local authority. Uh, I managed family support teams and child protection teams. Um, I'm a single parent to two children, actually two adults now, uh, as they're both grown up. Um, and over the years, I've had quite a lot of experience of dealing with conflict resolution and mediation. Uh, and today I hope to give you some useful insights and tips on dealing with the everyday conflicts that arise in your forums. Okay, uh, so let's start from right from the outset um, and say that a certain amount of conflict is healthy and normal within a variety of our relationships. Um, many things cause conflict, including different values, ideas, perceptions, desires, experiences, and so on and so on and so on. And our responses to conflict determine whether the agreement, um, the disagreement leads to growth and development or can cause pain and setbacks. Uh, there are many different types of conflict, a range of responses and numerous outcomes, as we know. Um, I won't be able to cover every aspect. Um, it's a big subject uh, um, of conflict. Um, nor do we expect that you will go away as experts today. Um, what I do hope to do with you is to talk you through some of the types of conflict you might experience in your forums, uh, and you'll certainly recognise some of them, uh, and give you some pointers on how you might want to approach resolving these. And then before we finish, um, we'll take a look at mediation, um, which you might need if things get really tricky, and you might want um, or need a third party to help you get some resolution, so that's mediation. And we'll talk a little bit about what this is and how it can help you.
So what I'd like to cover with you today is uh, changing slides. This is our agenda for today. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, as I say, and we'll try to get through as much of it as we can. Um, so we'll look at the different types of conflicts that arise uh, for your forums. Uh, and we'll also explore some common causes, including uh, conflict via social media. Uh, we'll look at some preventative um, work with conflict. And we'll look at some behaviours that may escalate conflict. Um, We'll look at how we can, how we commonly react to it ourselves, um, the impact on you, your relationships, and the group dynamic. And um, because it can be stressful and it can be difficult, we'll look at taking, um, we'll, you know, looking after yourself uh, and putting yourself first uh, when you're experiencing conflict. Uh, we'll go on to look at our ability to recognise signs of hidden conflict. Uh, and how to use the posit positive aspects and how to use difference creatively. And then the important part, I suppose, is we'll look at some techniques and approaches to diffuse and resolve it. And then at the very end, as before, we'll take a look at mediation, what it is, how it might help you, would it be useful to you? Okay. So, conflict. Um, a short definition. So uh, we already know what it is, um, but, but this is what the experts say. Um, so a conflict is a difference between people and is commonly caused, uh, a common cause um, may be conflicting ideas or interests. Uh, it can be between two people, several people, several groups, uh, an organization, two organizations, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and remember that the most, um, most groups have conflict. It's completely natural. You're not alone. Um, and it's just part of our everyday dealings with people and life. Okay. Um, so, different types of conflict. Uh, there are a range of conflict situations that you and your forums might experience. But generally, these fall into four main types. Um, uh, these are conflict uh, in your steering groups, uh, between steering group members. Um, founding members and newer members uh, of your steering group might get into conflict. Um, those arise for parent carers as wider members of your forum. And uh, conflict between an individual forum and its partner agencies, uh, including the local authority, of course, and its managers, departments, the clinical commissioning groups, you know, health groups and its managers, um, possibly a host organisation uh, who may be supporting your forum or holding your grant, and uh, sometimes, occasionally, between other support groups within your local authority. So let's take um, a look uh, a little more detail at some of those. Um, so firstly, between steering group um, or committee members, uh, whatever you uh, call your group or have named your group. Um, so lack of uh, clarity around roles and responsibilities. Um, so steering group members tend to be parent carers who are committed to and about their roles and responsibilities within the forums. Um, however, you may all have slightly different views on what those roles and responsibilities entail. Uh, who should do what? and what is expected from individual members of the group. So if that is the case, perhaps ask your advisor if, if um, you think you might, your, your, if you think your group might benefit from some um, uh, roles and responsibilities training, because there is some out there for you. Um, so also within the, the roles and responsibilities, um, it's just a word about some parents having a bit more time available to them than others, depending on what's happening in your life and with your family. So that some parent carers may always be present and in the thick of it, and others dip in and out um, as their circumstances allow. And this is perfectly normal, but it can cause um, issues uh, within some forums. And lastly, within roles and responsibilities, um, that some roles require comprehensive understanding of the subject. So an example of that might be a forum representative on a local authority SEND committee. Um, and other roles, less so. 
So conflict can occur when views differ about the qualities and skills needed uh, for, for the roles and who should represent the group and so on. So looking at how to get the job done can cause conflict. So forum members are bright and passionate, obviously. Uh, we know that. Um, they have their own ideas uh, about what's needed, and of course that's brilliant. Um, but a common cause of conflict can arise when there are different views within the group about how to get the job done. And an example of that might be, um, I think it would be best to have one large conference uh, event to relaunch uh, the forum um, and get to people within the local area. And you think it would be better to have several smaller gatherings. Um, you get to more parents that way and your money might go further. So um, a bit of a silly example, but there you have it. Um, so different styles of communication. Um, so it goes without saying that we're all different and differences are good uh, for forums. Uh, we all bring our own experience, expertise and skills. And we all bring our own style of communication um, and learned ways of interaction. Okay, so I'm going to make some generalizations here. So some people are very direct, say what's on their mind, get to the point, um, don't worry too much about niceties. Um, Others are more concerned about how they're perceived and people's feelings. Uh, it might take uh, a time to um, say what's on their mind, or it might never be said. Um, so just some examples there of how we're all different um, and how our different styles of communication can have an impact. So uh, another thing here, poor, poor chairing of meetings and inability to stay on task. So it's not uncommon for um, a chair to uh, lose focus on the issue on the table, um, to let people ramble on, to uh, let people talk about things that are inappropriate to the agenda. So um, we just try to focus on uh, chairing meetings well and possibly having a rolling chair um, if, if that's uh, a problem for you. So other issues, no minute taking, well we know what problems that can cause, I can't remember what was decided last time and so on. Um, key information that might not be shared with me, um, I come to the next meeting, I don't know what's been agreed, I don't know what's going on. And possibly financial information that uh, nobody's spoken to me about or one individual member has made a decision and hasn't shared it. So not surprising then that uh, you know with all these differences, um, it can be difficult to handle and resolve. Okay, so uh, between founding and newer members of your steering groups or committees, um, so it's not uncommon for conflict to arise between the two sorts of members, um, the long-standing ones and the newer, newer ones. Um, so founding members, uh, you know, they may feel that, um, you know, this is their work, they set up this forum, um, you know, they put all the effort in, nobody was around for them in the early days, and so on. Uh, and they may be very protective of, of the forum and its values and mission and what it does. Um, and as a consequence, they may want to keep a firm grip on things uh, and on the direction of, of the way the forum is going, um, which may be positive, but may have some negative impact as well. And for newer members, uh, they often come with um, new ideas, which is, again, of course, what we want. Um, but um, they, they may want to explore taking forum in a different direction or have thoughts about, um, you know, what's already in place. And, and, and they may be critical of that. Um, so, you know, those are the sorts of things that, that uh, may rear their head. Um, it's important to re remember that founders had the vision. Um, they put themselves out there in the first place and to recognise and respect their achievements. Um, that said, it's also important that your forum has a shared vision um, that everybody has eye into, both founding and newer members. Uh, and um, that's the way of, of making sure that your forums are going to continue to develop and to be relevant. Okay, between committee members more generally, um, so let's have a look at some of these and I bet you recognise some of them. So um, individual members making decisions uh, and without discussing them with committee members, um, withholding information, so we've 
uh, you know, looked at that before and uh, it can be uh, a big issue. Um, spending money without agreement. Um, manipulating uh, the group into factions. So this is an interesting one. So um, sometimes when conflicts occur, um, factions or cliques uh, can be uh, become apparent um, and loyalties can be split. Uh, dominance um, by one or more members. Uh, I think we, we all recognize that one. Um, and the direction of the organization, organization not clear or agreed. So I might think it's going in one direction, you might think it's going in another. Um, that is ultimately bound to cause um, a conflict. So it's really uh, useful to make sure that you have your constitutions, your procedures, your policies in place. That way we're all singing from the same uh, hymn sheet. We all know what we're doing. Um, so there can be differences about the role of the forum and um, some people come to the forum thinking that you are a campaigning uh, group rather than a group working in partnership uh, and they may want the forum to have a more supportive role for individual cases or individual families with the local authority and of course this can, um, this can cause uh, troubles. Uh, friendships coming before good decisions um, and self-interest, not often, but sometimes self-interest uh, coming before the good of the forum. Okay, um, conflict with wider members or other parent carers. So here's a range of issues that uh, can cause conflict for your parent care members and again you will recognise some of these. Um, so, as we've said already, parents not understanding the role of the forum, they might want you to take on their individual case, uh, you know, to uh, bash the local authority or the CCGs or a health uh, section, um, may feel that uh, you're, you know, you should do more campaigning and so on, so some conflict there. Um, parents might be in conflict with the local authority um, and may expect you to take sides on this. Uh, parents who dominate meetings, um, who might show negative or disruptive behaviour. Um, uh, and sometimes pa parents or carers think that the farm could do a better job. And let's face it, sometimes that, that is true. And, uh, you know, we're in the process of uh, an ongoing task or, or ongoing development. Um, uh, so sometimes uh, parent carers think that uh, the forum is trying to take over the role of another support group and it may be that they've been very loyal to that support group uh, and that can cause difficulty. Uh, and parents um, being prevented from becoming members either directly or indirectly. And parents who think that the, dis the, um, the forums focus on one disability over another and again let's um, let's acknowledge that sometimes that is the case. Uh, between an individual forum and its partner agencies, uh, so we're, what are we talking here? We're talking the local authority uh, and its managers, uh, departments within it, uh, the clinical commissioning groups, uh, health um, uh, and its managers or departments and sometimes uh, with a host organisation who might be supporting your forum uh, and handling your um, budget. And rarely, but occasionally, with other support groups within your local authority. Relationships with the local authority, health and others. Um, so, obviously I'm generalising and your local authority might be brilliant in every way, um, but these are a sample of some of the common worries. So from a foreign perspective, can't say perspective, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, limited or no communication uh, with your partners. Um, you know, is, is the local authority uh, just not communicating with you? Um, not being invited to uh, send or, or uh, health meetings, or perhaps you're invited but you're given very little notice. Um, it may be that meetings are set at inappropriate times, um, you know, for your parent reps. Uh, meetings start at 9.30 for the local authority, but of course you're on the school run then. Um, 
um, representatives from New Forum not being given due respect uh, by professionals, um, you know, perhaps um, you know, give, give, give them no background, being chucked at the deep end, getting no support from professionals. Um, and professionals who don't really know about the work of the forum, um, don't really know about it, don't really care about it, um, you know, uh, and, and need, need educating on that front. Um, perhaps you might have um, the, the local authority or CCG might have um, limited um, options for your forum to participate during Ofsted inspections. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that uh, often is a cause of concern for um, forum committees and forum members. Um, and occasionally there's a lack of understanding on behalf of your local authorities and your clinical commissioning groups on actually what co-production is uh, and what it means in practice. And because they don't know, um, they're not doing it or they're not doing it as well as you'd hope. So um, from the other side of the coin, uh, always good to look at the other side, and from a local authority or health perspective, um, forums not, re uh, not re they, they may feel that forums are not representative of a wider group of parents uh, in the local area. Um, they may feel that forums focus on the negative, um, and they don't appear to give a balanced view. Um, they may feel that you come across as a lobbying group uh, against the local authority or CCGs, as opposed to working in partnership with them. Uh, and some staff may face angry outbursts um, from parents at forum meetings, you know, those meetings where we ask an expert to come along and talk to parents. We've had a number of concerns from parents and we ask somebody to come along. Uh, and sometimes um, it can be um, those experts, as it were, can, um, you know, face difficult circumstances, people very angry, um, and they may not feel that, you, that you've supported them well enough, and in the long term, um, they might not want to be involved with the forum again. Um, so that's the other side of the coin. Uh, and just a nod to the fact that conflict can occur with other groups who are, who are providing similar services, you know, other support groups. Um, who may, may possibly feel a bit threatened by what you're doing and, and possibly some of your successes. Okay, moving on. I'll tell you that I'm here by myself. Um, um, so, um, and this is my first uh, uh, presentation uh, webinar. So do bear with me if it takes me a couple of seconds to change a slide. Okay, so um, conflict with a host organisation, um, uh, and this may involve the forum um, uh, where you're not holding your own budget, you're working with the host organisations. Um, not every forum is like this, but there are, there are some out there. So where conflict um, might occur is where um, the host organisation doesn't include uh, the forum in decision making. Um, and, uh, um, you know, may take that on uh, their own shoulders or doesn't include you enough. Um, they may assume uh, roles um, uh, w with strategic partners, um, may not set, you know, may not let you know about strategic meetings, may appoint themselves to go and talk on your behalf. Um, uh, and they may not keep you up to date with financial information about your grant or your grant spend, and that can be difficult. Um, uh, uh, conversely, the forum may leave everything up to the host organisation and only turn up to certain meetings, uh, and then they may not commit to um, working on, you know, developing the forum as, as, as you should. Um, and lastly, uh, a clear plan. So uh, it's possible that uh, you either don't have a clear plan or that you do have a clear plan, but that you haven't shared it with your host organisation. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there can be breakdowns in communication there, and obviously that can cause uh, conflict. Okay. Um, so, social media, conflict raised via social media. Um, I, I have to say that I don't profess to be an expert here. 
Uh, I'm a bit social media phobic myself, um, but I have friends and family and colleagues that I just can't prize away from it. Um, safe to say that we're all very different uh, and have our own unique personalities. Uh, and whilst this makes our online communities diverse and interesting, or that's what I'm told at least, uh, and gives us a range of experiences, views and debates, um, personalities and ways of communicating can clash. Um, that said, uh, so there's no denying uh, the value of um, uh, uh, social media, and many forums now use social media, um, a standard issue in their tool bag of, uh, of communication. So some basic tips for avoiding conflict uh, that arise by your social media um, uh, outlets um, are make sure your forum's values and principles are clearly displayed. Um, that way people um, you know, can, can see where your, where your principles lie uh, and uh, won't go astray there. Um, make sure you have clear information about the topics open for discussion and debate. Um, ask your online community for both their positive and negative experiences. Um, so that uh, you know your your conversations are not skewed on just the negative um, uh, uh, all, all of the time. Um, um, actively discourage or remove anything uh, that's not helpful um, from your from from those sites, um, and take time to think about how you react to criticism. Um, you know maybe they have a point. Um, maybe you need to talk about this privately. Um, try not to respond in anger um, online, um, rarely helpful uh, in my experience. Okay, and lastly, just keep a check on whether your members uh, have previous um, uh, personal arguments or differences uh, um, affecting their online interactions. Um, and uh, if, if you bear those things in mind, I'm told that um, uh, that, would, that would help you. Um, Okay, moving on. So, uh, preventing conflict. Uh, okay, so um, we've looked at some of the types and causes of conflict that uh, forums commonly experience. Let's look at some practical steps to prevent conflict in the first place. So, we've already talked a little bit about your constitutions, your policies, your procedures. Uh, make sure that everyone in the committee um, has a copy of those and uh, as far as possible has read them, um, uh, you know, discuss them in your groups if necessary uh, and update them as, as necessary, things change. Um, have a look at codes of conduct um, for your steering group meetings and possibly for your strategic meetings. Um, those are um, useful in agreeing terms of, uh, of conduct. Um, and uh, keep, again, keep everybody thinking about what you've agreed. So you might want to think about uh, an induction process, um, particularly useful for new members. Um, and if you look at the um, Contact Family uh, uh, website, there's, some, uh, there's a useful webinar on there about um, it, the induction process. So have a look at that if you need to. Um, Developing a co-production agreement with your local authority, um, uh, and I'm again uh, told that your advisor will have copies of these. Um, so yeah, uh, ask your advisor if you uh, want to look at one of those, uh, or I want to use one of those with your local authority. Um, share information within your committees goes without saying. Um, have some positive communication with your local authority and health contacts. Um, so always start with a positive where you can. Um, and, uh, you know, that is it always uh, helps us as individuals um, so that, you know, again, we're not focusing just on, on negatives all of the time. And uh, update your website and social media. Um, not something I'm good at, but uh, I'm sure you're all experts. Uh, and let your local authority know what you're doing to um, increase your uh, and widen your networks. You know, put numbers um, on on your website. And, uh, look at the 
good things that have happened, um, put events and things like that on the website, uh, and keep local authorities and UCCGs up to date with the good things that you're doing. Uh, so here's some more things on prevention. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, I'll let them let you look at these in your own time. Um, but uh, yeah, do have a look at some of these. Um, uh, one of the important ones here, I think, is, is get some support for yourself, uh, a coach or mentor um, uh, to guide you through. Uh, and you know, it helps build confidence and it will help you manage conflict thing, uh, conflict more effectively. Um, so yeah, do do have a look at that. And, and also talk to your advisor about um, uh, contact family trainers and associates who have experience uh, of um, supporting forums with conflict and supporting you individually uh, in times of conflict. Okay, um, so recognizing signs of hidden conflict. So I've used this slide mostly because I love this photo. <laughs> Isn't it great? Um, uh, but also to remind uh, ourselves that uh, when it comes to conflict, uh, there may be a lot more going on for people than we realize. Um, perhaps sometimes we miscalculate what's happening for people underneath the surface. So there, uh, there's a good analogy for you there. Okay, so signs of hidden conflict. Um, a lack of motivation. Um, an example of this might be group members seem less involved, um, take on fewer or no tasks, uh, may have lost their appetite for working as part of the group, unpleasant behaviour. Example, um, people start to make derogatory remarks about a group member or conversely exclude people um, from the discussion or task. Um, Falling attendance, people come less often, uh, sometimes they don't come at all, uh, they just don't turn up. Uh, factions, so sign of hidden conflict are that factions uh, or cliques might start to appear uh, where previously the group worked well together um, uh, and sometimes with people picking sides, so watch for that. Uh, falling productivity, um, suddenly the foreign business and everyday tasks might fall by the wayside. Uh, things are a lot harder to achieve. Uh, communication, um, lines of communication may impact, uh, may be impacted by conflict in, uh, conflict in the group and with partners. Um, so an example of that might be, um, I might not like the way the forum has portrayed my service area. Um, I feel aggrieved and demotivated to share information with you and I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Um, closing down links, similar to the last point, um, but where previously good links with health or your local authority or with another support group, um, are suddenly closed down and you don't know who to approach or where to go. Uh, and um, sudden reduction in co-production or consultation opportunities. Um, so it may appear that because of an area of unresolved conflict, uh, the forum gets fewer invitations or opportunities to work in partnership with your, uh, with your partner agencies. Um, you, partners may take up lines of communication with other support groups uh, and bypass you altogether. Okay, so um, behaviours that may escalate conflict. Okay, so we pretty much know what these are and we've all perpetrated them at some point in our lives and we've all experienced and witnessed them. Although not an exhaustive, exhaustive list, uh, I'm sure you can think of more, uh, they include oh, shouting and raised voices, oh no, don't like that, and pointing and aggressive posturing. Uh, hearing but not listening, I'm very good at that sometimes, uh, ignoring, aggressive and accusing language, uh, withholding information and knowledge can be quite powerful, um, ignoring the feelings of others, creating factions or cliques, um, only focusing on the negative, active sabotage, uh, non-participation or withdrawal again can be quite powerful, 
monopolizing, scapegoating, uh, and lastly, uh, procrastination. Uh, going on and on and on and going nowhere, uh, and um, I think we, we can probably recognize that. Uh, so the impact on you, your forums, group dynamics, and your wider partnerships. Um, so we're obviously all different, different life experiences, different shapes, colors, sizes, cultures, religions, or none. Uh, and of course, people and groups experience the impact of disagreement and conflict in different ways. Um, so on individual groups, some of the not so helpful, I might feel fearful, I might not feel in control, I might feel isolated, uh, under attack, uh, angry, I might feel terribly hurt. On the upside, um, it may make me more determined, uh, more resilient, and it may make me feel that actually more part of a team. You know, um, there was conflict, but we worked together and we worked it out. Um, for the group dynamics, um, it could cause frac uh, frac uh, factions to appear. Um, uh, it might impact on your perceived loyalties. Ooh, send some running for the door <laughs> um, and leave us, others deflated and depressed. On the upside, um, it might open up lines of communication and ultimately, ultimately it may bring you closer together uh, and make you stronger. Via partnerships, uh, impact on trust, um, might cause setbacks, uh, it could lose to, uh, lead to uh, excluding uh, uh, you might be um, excluded from a particular set of decisions or a particular set of meetings and so on. And on the upside, um, you know, when you've dealt with conflict, it can lead to a better understanding between the two of you um, and lead to growth and development. Um, so uh, we've all heard of the fight and or flight modes. Uh, as a reaction to conflict, and you may have a view about what your own reactions might be. Um, safe to say we all have different styles and responses, and some of us use a range of responses in the same conflict. Um, let's have a quick look at some of the common ones. Uh, so accommodating, um, so uh, someone who has an accommodating style tries to resolve conflict by accommodating the needs and perspective of others. Um, often through respect or support or sensitivity. Um, avoiding uh, or flight, <laughs> um, this sort of uh, style may attempt to resolve conflict by providing time and distance um, and may hope that things will just resolve themselves with time and that hopefully it will all go away. Um, collaborating uh, has emphasis on identifying the best, most robust, long-term solution with the greatest buying, uh, and this can lead to a win-win approach, and we've heard of that. Um, competitive or fighting or fight style, um, so may resolve conflict through testing ideas, uh, may be strong on facts that support their case, uh, maybe not so much uh, on, on facts that state the other side of the case. Uh, or, or they may be weak on hearing people and hearing the other side. Um, and lastly, compromise. Um, this kind of style has a common sense approach, often, uh, aiming for a workable solution, and it hopes to resolve conflict through negotiation, sometimes with an emphasis on the short-term progress, as opposed to solving the whole problem, may want to take it step by step. Uh, so if possible, we want a resolution um, that uh, we've come to together, uh, and one which leaves us all feeling that we have reached the right decision together. Um, so we don't want a win-lose, uh, where I win and you lose. Uh, we don't want a lose-lose, where we both feel frustrated and none of us got what we wanted. What we're aiming for is we both come out of the, uh, the issue, we're feeling that we've resolved it, we're happy with the resolution, and we're both win-win. Okay, so uh, this next slide is um, uh, about looking after you. Um, and you'll find more about the importance of looking after yourself in con conflict uh, in Sarah Lee's short film, which you'll find on the Contact Family website. 
Um, so if you do get a moment, have a look at that because there is some really good advice there. Um, nevertheless, I wanted to cover this briefly here because firstly, making sure you're okay in conflict is really important. And secondly, it might be the difference between being able to deal with the situation and getting to a good resolution or falling apart um, uh, and um, you know, having a lose-lose situation for everyone. So main points to remember are um, take a break if you need one. Uh, and if necessary, ask to resume the discussions after you've had time to think about it. Um, uh, you know, maybe come back to a meeting um, at a different time or a different place. Um, so accepting your feelings are simply your own. Um, so there's a range of emotions that we can experience when we face conflict. Anger, fear, isolation, confusion. Um, it's very, very normal, very, very human. Um, so try to manage your physical responses to conflict. Um, pay attention to your physical reactions and just keep calm and breathe deeply um, and things will be okay. Um, try to keep an open mind and to listen to the other side. Easier said than done sometimes. But being willing to listen and understand another person's perspective um, is an important part of responding to conflict. Um, active listening and acknowledging their views um, will pave the way for making sure that they understand that they've been listened to uh, and will be more likely that you'll be heard when it's your turn to, to have your say. Um, so focus on the present moment. Um, so it's tempting to bring up past problems and use these as uh, ammo against the person, um, but this often makes things worse. Uh, try to stay focused and on the issues on the table. And um, again, lastly here, uh, when, when looking out for yourself, um, it might be that it'd be useful to um, discuss the issue with a friend or family member, somebody who's outside the situation, and that can help us put things in perspective. Um, talking about how the conflict made you feel um, and uh, you know it, it, it might be a way of, of you letting off steam without actually taking the anger back back to, um, to back to the group or to the person you're uh, in conflict with and so here's some um, uh, pointers on managing one-to-one -one conflict uh, again, I'm not going to go through these all because um, uh, you can look at these in your own time. Um, but um, yeah, have a look at these uh, when you can. Um, uh, uh, just one point on here that kind of sticks out for me is that um, uh, don't be pressured uh, into finding a solution. Um, you know, some things are unreasonable and you need a little time to process that and to think about things. Uh, and it may be that it's more appropriate for the committee to take a bit of time um, uh, and, and to reach the right outcome. Um, okay, managing conflict in forum committee meetings or steering group meetings. Um, so, uh, if things or uh, when things <laughs> get tough uh, in, in your committee or steering group meetings, some of the things that you might want to uh, try are suggest a coffee break, a really simple one. Um, things are getting a bit eat, heated, things are getting a bit out, out of hand, um, you know, have a break, take a break. Um, uh, you might want to try splitting the groups, you know, flip charts, um, have a think about that in your groups, pull out the positives, pull out the realistic and achievables, um, and perhaps take a vote on final decision uh, so that, uh, you know, it's not just going round and round in circles in the wider group and you've taken active steps to uh, uh, look at it in, in more detail. Uh, Oh, different ideas. Um, try to be positive uh, uh, about different ideas. Uh, you know, encourage everybody's contribution. Um, try not to let one or two members dominate, um, and don't get bogged down in in um, uh, you know over one idea or, or one task. Um,
So you might want to think about your meeting space, um, the way you position your chairs, uh, who chairs, is it the same person uh, who chairs all the time, you might want to think about a rolling chair. So looking at some of the physical aspects of the group dynamic and, and actually, you know, how to change that, um, you know, how to break that down a bit so that um, it's less likely that con uh, conflict will occur. Um, and uh, again, you'll find a list of um, ideas about positive meetings on the Contact Family web website. Um, try to remember what your goals were and uh, revisit those if necessary. Um, emphasize points of concern, but also emphasize points of agreement. So it's often easier to start with what you agree on and move towards the difficult things, as opposed to starting with, with the things that we disagree on. Uh, and as we've said before, perhaps come back to it, you know, no, no harm in that. Um, come back to it uh, uh, another time when uh, tempers are less frayed um, and things can be more positive. Okay, so techniques um, for uh, <clears throat> facilitating conflict in meetings. So take a look, look at some of these for managing conflict in meetings. Uh, things like um, the energy in the group uh, can get sluggish uh, when there's conflict. So look out for that. Um, set some ground rules, um, uh, you know, uh, no put downs and so on. Uh, revisit the group's purpose. You know, have people temporarily lost sight of what, you know, what you set out to do, what your aims and objectives are. Um, if necessary, uh, ask for an outside facilitator. Um, it may be that you only need this for a while uh, and that you'll get back on track, but it can be really helpful. Uh, and look out for um, uh, people who bring up things that are not relevant uh, to the purpose of the meeting or the agenda item. Um, and perhaps use the parking lot system where a, a chair or, or another member of the group might say, it, you know, that's really interesting and, uh, you know, we, we clearly need to talk about that, but let's park that for a moment. You know, let's put it on this piece of paper and come back to it either at the end of the meeting or at another time when we can give this a bit more focus and, and a bit more time. So um, consider some of those techniques. Um, and here's a few more. So acknowledging people's anger. Um, so sometimes you just let... Uh, you know, sometimes we just need to have our say, get it off our chest, and then we're more productive and more constructive. And so you'll you'll be the judges of where that's appropriate and where it's not. But um, it's acknowledge it's it's good to acknowledge people's anger in some circumstances. And reflecting back, um, so letting people know that they've been heard. Um, uh, you know. Uh, this kind of statement, you know. Um, so you're really annoyed about that, and uh, you know we've we've picked up on that. Um, uh, and lastly, here, um, you know, suggest taking time out. Um, it may be that uh, the discussion is not appropriate for for your setting, for a wider group, and it may maybe that a more personal one-to-one -one approach um, might be a lot more productive and um, you know would we get to some resolution quicker so think about that okay so uh, just this is a um, uh, something that you might want to uh, use uh, where you're getting stuck um, and it's an activity with uh, that you can use with uh, flip chart it takes uh, uh, between one and two hours um, and it, it, it's a process where you go round and round you let people have their say so the first round might be uh, a person we start with one person they have their say there's no interrupting um, that's the rule while they're speaking you go on 
until everybody has had their say. During the second round, facilitator encourages people to state their feelings um, and what they see as the issue. Uh, and um, in the third and fourth round, the facilitator encourages people to identify solutions to the issue. Um, while all of this is going on, um, uh, the, um, the issues and solutions are being written up uh, and uh, the alternatives have been you know, written down. Um, and then you can have one final round where people state their preferred uh, solution to the problem. Uh, so it's um, uh, try this within your groups where you've got a different, uh, a difficult uh, issue, um, and uh, see what you think. And if people don't want to speak, they can pass. So uh, nobody has to um, uh, speak if they don't want to. Okay, so we know that conflict is a very ordinary, if not somewhat trying part of our everyday life. Uh, we all experience it, engage in it, and hopefully we learn from it. Um, so while the term conflict generally is associated, uh, associated with uh, a negative encounter or a neg negative um, experience, conflict itself is neither inherently good nor bad. Uh, and in fact, uh, engaging in conflict can have positive effects on relationships within your forums and those within your partner networks. Um, uh, so these are a couple of quotes uh, about the positives from people much smarter than me. Uh, so uh, consider some of these benefits. Um, ah, it makes us fully aware of the problems, which can only be a good thing. Um, discussion leads to better solutions. Uh, again, a really good thing. Um, it's more uh, effective and more efficient than letting uh, a conflict fester. Um, love that word, don't you? Fester. Um, it can lead, so challenging old assumptions can lead to positive change uh, and development uh, in our forums. Um, and it requires us all to kind of dig deep, really, um, and find creative solutions, you know, the creative part of us uh, for the best outcomes. Uh, it requires us to consider each other um, uh, and uh, look at other people's perspectives. Um, and it kind of makes us think about the importance of, of others, uh, really. Um, you know, if we deal with it well, um, you know, if we come out the other side and we've got a solution, it can really um, boost our, our self-confidence and make us feel good about ourselves. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's really important for all of us. Um, you know, we're often dealing with challenging things and difficulties in our lives and, um, you know, to, to feel good about ourselves is a really important aspect. Um, and lastly, conflict creates opportunity, um, you know, to look at it differently, to do different, different things, to take a different route, uh, and so on. Okay, so some top tips um, uh, in summary. Um, so, um, define acceptable behaviour. So you know what you, they say about seeming. Um, just having a definition for what constitutes acceptable behaviour is a positive, positive step. Um, stay calm. Uh, you know, we've talked about it. Core heads prevail in even the most difficult conflicts. Uh, conflicts. Um, uh, you know, take control by being cool. Um, and, it, and it will be uh, uh, easier for others to do the same around you if you can achieve that. Uh, try to be positive. Um, you know, conversations that only ever focus on our negatives or our inability to do something often have a downward spiral. Um, express yourself appropriately. Try to express your feelings respectfully and clearly uh, and in a non-destructive manner. Easier said than done, um, but worth the effort. Listen well. We spoke a lot about listening. Um, so try to focus on what people are saying and not your, you know, not your comeback. Um, I'm, again, I'm really good at that. <laughs> So try to try to avoid that. You know, um, recognize difference uh, in perspectives. Um, 
don't exaggerate to make a point. Uh, we're all a bit guilty of this, but try to avoid it. Um, exaggeration is lying, and lying never helps in a conflict uh, uh, situation. Um, so an example of that might be, um, I'm in discussion with my local authority and I say, we've consulted with every one of our 50,000 members uh, who use school, tramp, uh, use school transport and every single one of them thinks it's rubbish. <laughs> so you can see, um, obviously that's a bit of a joke, but um, much better to, um, you know, uh, say you've heard from a few parents and there are issues with transport and let's work together to see what we can do about that or have that survey, you know, something along those lines. Uh, look for common ground. Uh, we've talked about that earlier, so um, look for things that you do agree on. Um, uh, an example of that might be that both parents and leisure server, uh, uh, service managers want a better experience for youngsters with additional needs when visiting playgrounds. Um, and so that's common ground. Um, and so then how can you work together to make that a reality? So look for the common ground. And lastly on this one, commit to working it out. So take charge of that process by committing to re reach a, 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 a resolution, you know, to, to come to some agreement. Um, um, you know, it's uh, a powerful impact can occur when one person makes this statement uh, and it can turn the temperature down immediately. So you might want to give that a go. So, um, okay. So if things get really tricky, you've tried everything and it's still a big issue, uh, you might want to try mediation. So, so what is mediation? Uh, so it's a process uh, conducted confidentially in which a trained neutral person known as a mediator assists the parties in working together um, uh, towards a uh, negotiated agreed uh, agreement to their dispute or difference. Um, with the parties themselves remaining in control, it's not the, the mediator that makes decisions, um, it's the parties involved uh, who agree to come to a settlement and the terms of that agreement. I'm aware that we're um, a bit short on time. So these are the processes for mediation. I'll leave those, uh, I'll leave you to um, talk through those um, amongst your group or to have a look at them uh, in your own time. But basically uh, mediation is um, a process where both parties need to come together and, and have to agree to that. Um, uh, is strictly confidential. Uh, each party has time to speak confidentially to the mediator uh, and the mediator uses a wide variety of techniques which I won't go through here um, but uh, they use those to um, guide the process um, uh, and obviously um, uh, a mediator is trained to work with difficult situations and help you come to some resolution to your disputes. So if you think mediation might work for you, um, have a chat with your advisor um, who might be able to put you in touch with someone who can help. Um, alternatively, there are lots of freelancers out there who you might want to uh, tap into. Um, uh, and um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, use it uh, if you think it might help. Um, uh, you know, sometimes having a third party really helps uh, us to uh, come to a different um, resolution with things uh, and just helps us move on, basically, uh, and get to a point where we can build our relationships again and we can start to have our relationships working uh, and, and that one issue of conflict is resolved and, and we are moving on. Uh, and last word. Um, so, when things get really tough, um, try to bear in mind that a solution to a disagreement or conflict uh, may be hard to find, but take a deep breath and remember that at the end of the day, um, even though you may disagree on how to get there, we're all after the same big prize. Um, that's, that's your forums, your committees, your parent members, your local authorities, your CCGs, 
We're all after getting the very best outcomes and making the best futures for all our children, young people and their families. And we sometimes forget that. So um, there is now a um, time for questions, although I understand we're a bit over time and uh, some people may have had to have left us. Um, but um, Helen uh, will send me some questions um, that have come in. Um, just a word on that, that if we don't get time to answer all your questions, um, I may come back to you individually um, uh, if, if um, uh, that, that might help. Or uh, questions and answers will be launched on the uh, Contact a Family website with this webinar uh, next week. So, um, uh, and the very last thing, um, thank you so much for attending. Um, uh, we've got a short questionnaire, which um, as at the beginning, I'd really appreciate it if you would take the time to complete. Um, so let me look at questions. Okay, so Helen tells me that no questions have been received. Um, so everyone is just digesting the webinar, hopefully. Um, if you do, um, as I said earlier, uh, conflict is a difficult, um, uh, you know, a course of, um, uh, is a difficult situation for a lot of us. Um, if you do think of questions afterwards uh, and you want an individual response or you'd like to talk it through with someone, um, do get in touch and uh, we'll try to get back to you. I'll try to get back to you. And um, any questions that do come on uh, will be uh, posted, as I said earlier. So thank you so much for joining me uh, uh, during this webinar. I'm sorry uh, for any mistakes uh, I've made, but um, hopefully my next one will be picture perfect and uh, let's talk again soon. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye.